So now let's do borders on this driveway. First of all, when you do borders, you're going to have to break them up into segments. And the reason is, especially on a curved surface like this, is that we got one that's basically straight here, and then it curves here. You can't make borders straight and then curve them and have them be the same border because there's no control to control the curve. So what I've learned to do is break them up into segments. So this from here down would be a, a segment. Then going around this corner will be a segment. And this is a pretty straight line going all the way out here. That could be another segment. Then on the other side, of the driveway would be a segment then would have one going around this corner to here would be a segment and then finishing off down to the bottom so let's draw a couple of them so you can get an idea so what I'm going to start with is just draw along the edge here so I zoom in and right about to where it goes to curve that's where I'm going to cut in here and I would say the border is going to be about that wide and now I've drawn in the border. So what I'm going to do is get a border and I got this border here. Actually let's get it out of the program. So if you go to patterns what you do is go down here to soldier course and all the libraries change to your soldier course patterns and what you want to do is you want to use one pattern because if you change them all at the uh, same time you'll want them to change together. So I want something going across this direction here. Um, so I'm going to use something that will show up so you could see it. This one would probably work here. I'll click on that. And as you could see, it placed the border in here. Then I would go in and adjust the perspective. And then I'll make it a little bit wider. So now I've got that border in there. I'm going to also save the library here with the soldier course. Now I want to define another area. So I click OK. I go back in the Define Area Tools, and again I continue on drawing the border. I back that off by hitting the backspace because I was off a little bit here. So I'll bring it right about to here, bring the border into about there, and this is where it gets a little tricky is because you have to eyeball what you think the border is going to look like, and this is where if you can't draw with a mouse, life will be a little more difficult. Okay, then I would go to move point and just adjust this a little bit. That looks pretty good actually. So now I'll go back in, whoops, click the wrong thing. Back into my borders here. Find the one that I use, which is this one. Okay, now you'll see it looks good right here, but it needs to go around the corner here. To do that, click on free, which will free up your perspective handles. And then move these handles around. And as you can see, I've tweaked them so that it looks like they're smaller here in the middle and wider going out there like uh, borders would going around a corner because you'd have to trim them. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm good enough. I click OK. And now I'm going to again define another piece. Go back into the drawing tools. We'll take this one all the way over to the shrub here. Hmm, now I'm looking at this, I drew one of these too small. I think actually this is too big. But let's make this a little bit bigger here. So I'm going to bring these out to kind of match the size. What I'm doing, by the way, is I'm using the Move Point tool and I'm clicking on these points that I drew and I'm just dragging them out a little bit here to make this a little bit wider. It looks funky right here. Okay, looks better. So now we go back into library, go back and grab the one that I was using. Now you see that the borders are going in the wrong direction. They're going across this way because I use these to begin with. What you need to do is click on free and then rotate the borders by grabbing the handle and bringing it over to this side, grabbing this handle, handle and bringing it over here, like so. And you see how that worked? And we'll make them look like they're laying down a little bit here. Okay. 
So you continue on doing this, and I'll be back when I got all the borders defined. Okay, so now I've defined all the areas for borders. I'm going to click on a few of them so you can get an idea of what the segments are. So there's one here, one here, one here. This one here I did as, if I can click on it, as one piece because the uh, soldier course is going in the same direction and they're parallel to each other, so I did it all as one. And then I've got one little piece here going straight, one piece going around the corner, one piece coming down to the street, and then one piece going across the street here. Now the next step would be to group these together. Uh, so again, let's go back up to, we'll go back here to select by name. And you'll notice that this makes it pretty easy because they're all the same name, cream, charcoal, V, which is uh, a border. So I'm just going to click on all these. I'm double clicking actually. Now they're all selected. I click OK and now I'm going to go to area and create a texture group. So if I change one, I change them all. So let me build a quick library and drag and drop a soldier course on that. Now before I put in a couple trees here to replace the ones I've covered up, I'm going to replace this grass over here because I think it's going to look much better if it's green than dead grass. So again I'm going to go into the define area tools and I'm going to show you a trick here where I'm going to just draw over the grass here. Instead of trying to draw right along the line of the grass, I'm just going to cover up the pavers here with what I'm drawing, and you'll see why here in a second. Because I'll be able to send the grass behind the uh, pavers. I hope I have grass in the library. So now I'll select on the grass, and it didn't work. Let's select on. Now we got some grass. Uh, we'll put the grass here, put a little bit of perspective on it. But you notice I did a bad job of drawing it. Again, not worried about it because I'll send the grass to the back, which will place it underneath the paper. So I'll go up here to send it back. And you can see now the grass is a perfect edge going along the borders here because it's really difficult sometimes to draw exactly on an edge like that. Sometimes you have a gap and stuff so and it takes longer. So a shortcut is to just draw over it and send the grass to the back. Okay so let's put in a couple uh, trees here because we had a tree here and a tree over here that I covered up. So I'm going to go up here to the object library, go to plants, go down here to trees and I'm going to go to northern trees because I think the plants that were there are Japanese maples, at least one of them. Um, hard to tell because they don't have any leaves on them. So let's see if I can find one that'll look good here. Let's see what this one looks like. Minimize the library. Well, it looks pretty good. So we'll size it down by grabbing one of the corner handles and of course there are many movies that tell you how to deal with uh, plants and objects place that one there and you can see the trunk is growing out of that plant there so I'm going to trim that trunk off by going here to the erase tool and just give it a little trim job. So now it looks like it's behind the plant. Let's get another tree for the other side and let's try the one next to it. Yeah, it one's a little, little bright. Let's take this guy and stick him over here. Now this one is a little bright and it's kind of popping out. So if I really want to use this tree, what I would do is I'd just go up here to shadow. And now it's made a shadow of this tree. And I'll take that shadow, send it to the front, put it in front of the tree. And as you can see, it tones the, uh, the color of the tree down so it doesn't pop out as much. Line that shadow up. Magic. Okay, uh, basically we're done. Let's save this again by clicking Save. Now I'm going to go in and create the right pavers and stuff here so we can finish this off. But I'll send you this picture in the meantime.